Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is message 545. The name of our devotional today is Grateful and Safe. But first, let us pray. Colossians 3.15 And let the peace of God rule in your hearts and be thankful. My Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for your peace, my Father. Thank you for your peace in this world that is so chaotic, in this world where everything is turned upside down, where good is bad and bad is good. Let your peace rule our hearts always, my Father. Let it be a rampart. Let it be, Father God, a shield and a protector, Father God, for us. For us and our families, for our friends and our sisters and brothers in Christ, for the church, for the pastors, Lord. Let the peace of God reign in our hearts, my Father. And then be thankful, be grateful. Thank you, my Lord, that only we can achieve that by being in your presence, my Father, conversing with you, praying, my God, and following you and become your disciple. Lord, that is how we really attain peace, my Father, by being still, by meditating on your word, on your precepts, my Father, and by doing the things that you say that we should do, which you know those things work. Thank you, my Father, in the mighty name of your precious Son, Jesus. Amen. An attitude of gratitude, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts and be thankful. When you really meditate on this verse, there is so much here that we need to glean, glean on, we need to extract, we need to understand. Then when we apply the teachings of Jesus to our life, Everything that he says for us to do is for us to walk in the path of peace. Everything. When we love the unlovable, when we forgive every day, when we are kind, when we fight evil with good, all of those things produce peace. Jesus is the only God that promotes peace and love, that he came down from earth to walk with us. And he's just asking us for faith. He's asking us for gratitude so that he can produce the peace in our hearts. All other religions, we have to work towards attaining, we have to work towards achieving something. And we don't have to work with Jesus, we just have to believe in him and just follow what he says for us to do. And if you apply it to your life, just try it for 30 days. Be kind and loving don't get angry apply the teachings and the word of god to your life to the relationship that you have with your co-workers with your boss with your mother-in-law with your sister-in-law with the people that are difficult in your life with your kids if you forgive your kids if you sit down and you talk with them and you say you know what i screamed at you today and I'm very sorry that I did that and I'm gonna to try to do better. And I would really appreciate if you can help me with this, if you can meet me halfway and so that we can work this out, you and I. If you talk to your kids that way, like if they're human, like if they are people with a mind that they have emotions, they have their personalities, without disrespecting them, with considering them always, Things will turn around. Things will turn around because they're going to see you as human and not as an authority figure that doesn't make mistakes or that is perfect or that cannot 
ask for forgiveness or um, apologize. And these precepts and these teachings of Jesus, you can apply to every situation of your life, every situation, and it's going to work. And it's amazing how it does work, how you are kind to someone that is being unkind to you. Like I've been in uh, jobs where I've had to do customer service because I'm, that's one of my forte, fortes. I, I like to speak with people. I like to bring a bad situation and make it into a good situation. I can negotiate with people and I've seen it happen. I've seen it in my own life how my career and my profession changed and the way that I grew when I applied the precepts that I learned from leadership books that were or are Christian leadership books and the way that Jesus applies his precepts and his teachings to everyday life. I would ask myself, what would Jesus do in this situation? And instinctively, because I've read the Word of God and because I have understood and I have pondered and meditated and I've leaned into it and allowed it to become me, the Word of God, you allow it to become part of your life. It is ingrained and then instinctively you will do it. But we can't pick and choose what we are going to believe in or what we are going to do. It becomes a way of life when you believe the whole thing. When you believe everything that the Bible says, that is when the Bible becomes a way of life. And when it does become a way of life, you're going to see that your life is going to change. And this Bible verse in Colossians 3.15, it's going to tie in with this whole devotional today that I'm bringing to you because I believe that when you are grateful, when you are grateful and you are thankful, and that mindset of gratefulness will produce a safety in your life. It produces safety because when you're grateful, you are completely connected to the Creator. You are connected to your Father in Heaven. You are thanking him under your breath for everything that is happening in your life. For everything and the, the bad, the good, the bad and the ugly. You thank him anyway and you ask him to change your situation or to change you in the middle of your situation. And so it does produce a safety when you know that you are connected to God. One of the biggest reasons why people in this world are so irate and they are confrontational and they are angry and they are at a loss of peace is because they have so much woundedness and so much anger for whatever many reasons of that is happening or that have happened in their life and they cannot bring it to God. They cannot connect with God and they know from the bottom of their hearts that they are disconnected from the Creator, disconnected from gratefulness and from love and from kindness. And that in itself can make you angry when you know that you're going through life and you are against God, when you are walking against the current, when you're going against the current, you know in your heart and that makes you angry. But you can't turn it around. You can't change. And it's hard because some people don't even know how to change. Some people don't even know where to begin. But some people have a problem with listening. They don't listen. They don't accept. They don't receive. Therefore, they can never have the peace. Because to begin with, they need to be grateful. And so it is just amazing to me for 17 years i have been applying the lessons the teachings and the precepts of jesus to my everyday life 
and I have worked in places where I've had difficult people, a multitude of difficult people. I've had a person in my department call me out and say, who do you think you are just because you are a Christian? Do you think that you're better than us? Right in the middle of a department. And I have turned it around and I've brought that person a gift and it was hard. It was very hard. There was a difficult person in my department that was super perfectionist and she would call, try to call me out and try to make me lose my credibility. And one day we were, we had these boxes for children with Christmas gifts and she had this doll on top of her desk. And I went on Amazon and I ordered the doll and I gave it to her as a gift. That was super hard for me to do. But that changed our relationship completely. It changed it completely where that woman never again was rude to me. She was never again a perfectionist or trying to call me out in whatever, whatever I did. Um, and it just turned things around to a way where we understood each other. I understood her and I didn't judge her because I understood where she was coming from and in what place she was operating from. She didn't have God in her life. She didn't have the love and, and, the, and the mercy and the compassions and all of the benefits that God brings to our life. So therefore, I had to be compassionate with her. I had to be kind in order to show her the love of God and that doesn't make me perfect and that doesn't make me better than anybody else. It just makes me, I believe, a little wiser and a little smarter that I know that this works and I apply it to my life. And that is why I bring you these messages because it's not about being on YouTube and having XYZ subscribers. It's about me knowing that this works and bringing it to you presenting it to you with a testimony every day that tells you, hey guys, you know what? This really works and it's working in my life and I'm totally honest and vulnerable and real and I am transparent. I used to be a drug user, an alcoholic. I used to be the biggest sinner on earth, but I chose to believe Jesus and his word and everything in it. There is no doubt, there is no unbelief. I chose my path and my path works for my life. My path works and I follow Jesus. So the message, grateful and safe. For most of us, life is busy and it's complicated. We have countless responsibilities. And we begin before sunrise, and many of us end after sunset. But amidst the rush of the daily grind, it is easy to lose sight of God and his blessings. But when we forget to slow down and say thank you to our maker, we are robbing ourselves of his presence, of his peace, and of his joy. Our task as believing Christians is to praise God many times a day. Then with gratitude in our hearts, we can face our daily duties with a perspective and power that only he can provide. Let us thank God for allowing us to experience troubles that drive us closer to him. Troubles that make us grow, that make us mature. Because unfortunately, as humans, we only grow when we're in trouble. We only look to God when we're in trouble. We become all prayerful and we remember God when we are in trouble. And sometimes, you know, this is the way that God basically brings teachings into our lives. And so the first, first concept the first step to having a good relationship with God is being grateful, applying the gratitude attitude, and just saying, God, thank you. 
Thank you for this day. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my children. Start simple and just, you know, grow on that and do a gratitude list. And you're going to see that when you are grateful, when you are saying, thank you, Lord, thank you, my father, thank you for my job. Thank you, my father, for everything. Just thank him for everything. You're going to feel a sense of safety that is going to be unreal. It's going to be supernatural. It's a peace. It's a safety that nothing in this world can provide to you. Isaiah 43 verses 2 to 3 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Life is not always easy, but as a recipient of God's grace, you also know that you are protected by a loving Heavenly Father. In times of trouble, God will comfort you. In times of sorrow, He will dry your tears. When you are troubled or weak or sorrowful, God is the contrary. God is always present and always vitally engaged in the events of your life. Reach out to Him and build your future on the rock that cannot be shaken. Trust in God and rely upon Him and His provisions in His mercies. And He can provide everything that you really need and far, far more. Remember, everything you need, Jesus has for you. Everything. And so today I encourage you to practice gratefulness. That is one value that we can build our life upon. As I'm always talking about the values that we can build our life on. And this is a value that is, and it also, it softens your rough edges. And we need smoother edges to be able to apply the concepts of Jesus, the teachings of Jesus, to be loving in an unlovable world. So remember, gratefulness will lead you to a sense of safety, to a sense of peace. And it's not only a sense, it is a reality. Thank you, my Father, for this message. We love you. We thank you. Father God, we thank you for all of your teachings. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you, my Father, that this is a true way of life. It is a true way of life that works, my God, if we apply it and if it works, if we work it. We just thank you, Lord God, in the mighty name of your precious Son, Yeshua, my Father, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We give you praise, honor, and glory today and every day. Amen. My friend, I encourage you to play in the light, play in the sunshine and dance in the rain. Remember to look up. Remember to look around you. Be grateful. Be thankful. And you will feel safety. You will feel peace. Until we meet again, God bless you. This is a prayer to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Father God, thank you so much, my Lord, for Jesus. Thank you so much that I realize that I am a sinner and that I need a Savior, God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the precious blood that was shed on the cross at Calvary for me, for my sins. Lord Jesus, I ask you forgiveness for every one of my sins. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I give you my word that from this day forward, I will follow you. I will read the word, I will go to church, and I will spend time with you, Lord Jesus. I want to get to know you more. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for making something of my life that is worthwhile, something wonderful. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me as your son, as your daughter, into the kingdom of God. 
Thank you, Lord, for your love, for your great grace. In your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Thank you for receiving me today. Amen. My friend, if you have made this prayer, if you have said this prayer, I congratulate you for because today there is a celebration in heaven. The Bible says that when one sinner repents, there is a celebration. In other words, there is a party in the kingdom of God. And so I congratulate you because it is the absolute best decision that you will ever make or have ever made in your life. Many blessings to you and to your family. In Jesus' name, amen.